Ladies and gents, Pal World is absolutely busted. I'm pretty sure that I just broke the game again. And if you ever wondered what's the absolute max attack power you can probably get on a Pal, well, it's pretty close to 5,000 and that's not even completely optimized. So that's why today I want to talk about some amazing abilities that you should be using right now, including some that you can only pass down from specific bosses and it's likely that the trick is going to be removed really soon because i can't imagine this is going to survive any more than a couple more patches so just to go over a quick breakdown we have about a total of 100 plus active abilities between all of the breeds and all of the pals in pal world about 50 percent of them can also drop as skill fruits which makes it quite easy to transfer those abilities to literally any pal you want but then there's the remaining half which is much more difficult to transfer and some of those, about like 20 of them, are completely exclusive to certain creatures and certain bosses like for example Jet Dragon's Beam Comets or the Twin Spears from Necromus and there are plenty more, about 20 in total that are completely non-transferable. However, this still leaves us off with about 20 plus remaining abilities from different creatures and yes, this also includes the very tower bosses you get to fight. And there are exclusive tower boss abilities like the Dark Wisp which you get on Victor and Shadowbeak and the Multicutter from the Lily and Lilene fight which you can absolutely pass down to your actual team still in patch 1.4.1. So let's begin with the process. First of all, the same trick as before to capture the tower bosses still works in the latest patch. I literally did this a few hours ago. You just have to get yourself into trouble, get a wanted level, go to the tower boss and absolutely make sure that the boss gets hit by one of these guard stray bullets. Once you see that happening and gets just a little bit of damage, the boss goes into this coma, goes into a corner, abandons life and after like 5 or 10 seconds wait time, you can throw literally any sphere at it and you notice that it's completely capturable even with a zero percent capture rate so i've done this for all of the bosses since obviously i wanted to see which one of these have unique abilities that we can transfer down well it turned out that it's only lily and lilene and victor and shadow beak so let's get started with victor and shadow beak as this features dark wisp the only boss in the game that has this ability and i will say that in my opinion this is completely busted if you know how to build it but as far as breeding goes, you kind of have two routes, both with their own different levels of difficulty. So the first route is to go ahead and breed the tower bosses with their corresponding pals, which is always going to give you that pal as an offspring. So for example, Victor and Shadow Beak plus a Shadow Beak will always give you, you guessed it, a Shadow Beak. Anything else, and this includes all the other tower bosses, will always result in a chickpea. However, the caveat over here is that while it is easier to transfer the passive abilities, so Legend, Ferocious, Musclehead and so on, it's going to be a lot more difficult to transfer that active ability, in this case the Dark Wisp. However, the second method is to combine these tower bosses with a chickpea and this is going to have a much better chance to pass down the active skill instead, so the Dark Wisp or the multi -cutter. Reason being mostly because the chickpea has a much more limited pool of active abilities, so you have a much greater chance for the active ability you want to pass down to the offspring. However, it's going to be more difficult to pass down the passives, so Legend, Ferocious, Musclehead and so on. So just pick your poison. So the way I chose to do this was to combine my almost perfect Shadow Beak that we already covered in a previous video with the Tower Boss. And since I already had the Cake Bakery down and was like doing dozens every few minutes, it was very easy for me to just spread a few of my breeding pans around a couple of my bases and recapture the same boss a couple more times. So in total I had like 4-5 bosses within four or five breeding pans all doing breeding with my initial shadow beak and then the subsequent offsprings that also dropped with the same passives and because my initial shadow beak only had those four abilities and because the boss had none it actually happened quite often to get offsprings with all of those four specific passives on it so in the end this funneled into itself and obviously you can grow it as much as you want to reduce that timer and eventually get the perfect shadow beak out of it now this must have taken over 40 tries before i even saw a first shadow beak with the dark wisp ability and if it doesn't show up on the first level on the first couple of abilities 
forget about it don't level that specimen up you're not gonna get it from there if it's not on the first level it's not gonna be there at all so exclusively look for level ones that already have the dark wisp by that level on the first or the second entry and from that point on i needed about like 40 or 50 more before i saw a second and a third one and by the third one luckily i also got it with the perfect stats it could have been way worse and go with way more but I'm just gonna take it from this point on. I did not use any lucky stats, so I'm not gonna try to do any more breeding from this point on. But because my initial shadow beak had a ton of good passives and because the boss had none, then it had a very good chance for the offspring to also feature the legend ferocious muscle head and so on. So by the end of it, I had other specimens with these four that I could funnel into other breeding sessions with other doubles of the same boss in different bases. So in this case, we also ended with about 90 or so other shadow beaks, which is perfect because we could then funnel these into condensation and essentially just get a rank 3 right out of the gate. That's why I prefer this one. If you were to go with the chickpea instead, then you're subjected to even more RNG on the Dark Wisp side, because then you have to transfer this up to Estagon, and then from Estagon to Shadow Beak again, so way, way more RNG than it's worth it. I know of users out there who have done over 400 breeds with the chickpea route to get just to Shadow Beak. And I will say this, the ability, also because it's awesome to look at and because it's so unique, is nice to have, but it also deals very good damage. Like, it makes really quick work of Palladius, despite him having, like, the third highest HP in the game. Anything below this, anything below legendary quality, will get one shot before you even get all the balls on those bosses, so don't even think about it. Especially if you put some hook rates in your party, forget about it, your darkness damage will be up to, like, 2 to like 3000 is going to be absolutely insane plus you have three abilities of 150 plus damage and this is by the way the intermediary step the final actual step would be to bring this shadow beak to a frostalian noct so that would mean bringing this to a hells of fear and then the hells of fear combining that with a frostalian and finally making the ultimate darkness creature that will absolutely destroy everything but that's going to be the longest process as it's very difficult to get a lot of frostalian knocks but for now i was surprised just how good of a damage it does even to the normal frostalian so really nice on those balls and again they will always auto track to the boss when you leave the creature to do its own thing but like I said, this isn't even like the craziest combo you can get in the game. There are others including ones that have the most basic looking pals, or should I say the most colorful looking ones, because there are quite a few explosion abilities in the game that are really strong, like be quiet, implode, but by far the best in the entire game is going to be the Megaton implode, something that comes with a whooping 500 damage, probably the highest damage on a skill in the entirety of Pal World. There's only one creature that has this, which is Tokotoko, and of course, it also doesn't have any skill fruits to pass this down, so you're gonna have to breed up from a Toko to actually get it on your preferred pal. But in this case, we're gonna use the Megaton Implode with, yeah, one of your suggestions, which is the Goree Rat. Goree Rat actually can double its attack power with its active skill ability. So in this case, I had a toko from that previous breeding video I already made. So again, totally check that one out. It goes over the entire process of how I got this, as well as the previous Shadow Beak in the ultimate teams. But essentially, I had to breed this up all the way to a Gorilla Rat, which luckily was only one breed away, involving some of these Ray Hounds, which are quite abundant around the desert area. So again, you're gonna have to do hundreds of these. In total, it took me 151 tries before I even got a final Goree Rat with the proper ability. But in this case, it was perfect because again, we could funnel those into the condenser and essentially get a perfect Goree Rat at the end of it. Now, I also recommend combining this with a bunch of Ribbonies in your party as they also buff up your neutral party mates. And in this case, Gori Rat is exactly that, so it buffs that, plus its Megaton Implode ability that you now transferred to it. Also, try to get your Ribbonies to rank 4 and increase that passive even higher, so 20% per Ribbony, you will need about 540 in total 
so that you can condense all of them into four specific ones. The only other thing I recommend adding in the process is this Ekdir Lokomoko, which is very easy to craft at the electric kitchen. It's very inexpensive, but it gives your pal a plus 20% to attack power. So when we combine all of these, the ribbon is your best pal plus the food, you get 2700 total damage. And then when we activate that Gori Rat skill, we have 4700, almost 5000 damage right out of the gate, which is going to be absolutely insane. You don't even have to have ribbon is in the party to essentially one shot literally any boss with the exception of the legendary ones. So everything completely gets obliterated in an instant. But from that point on, if you want to fight against legendaries, obviously you're going to absolutely destroy them too. So this can go up to 70 or 80% of their damage completely gone just as fast. I do recommend having the explosion happen right at the head level. So if you can get your Gorilla Rat to do its explosion right next to its head, you're also going to get another like 20-30% extra damage because of the headshot multiplier. So in this case, we could bring down the Jet Dragon even like to 1000 HP. But essentially, you can absolutely own anything and from that point on, you can either switch to a different character, sacrifice one of the Ribbonies and have your main fighter like just handle the remainder of the fight also shoot or you know just do anything else because at that point they're going to be super low hp and easy to capture and i know what you're asking well what happens since your gorilla rat is also getting obliterated i mean that's 99 million damage can we do anything about it well not really not unless we can get that specific gorilla rat at at least 99 million hp which is completely not feasible so the best way to do this is to just, yeah, eventually bring it back at your base and put it inside a display case. This is going to instantly revive it and you can then put it back into your inventory. Or you can just pass the day, take a sleep and your uh, creature that was formerly dead is now going to be completely revived plus full HP. Now we do have a couple other options in here too. We had the multi cutter from Lily and Lilene. So this is going to shoot three of those wind discs instead of just one. It's actually a very strong ability and the cooldown on it is really low. Um, but uh, in this case, I also recommend coupling a leaf creature with the seed mine. The seed mine is probably one of the best abilities in the game despite its lower damage because it explodes into multiple other seeds that all deal damage. You can actually line this up on bigger bosses and almost one shot them even with an unoptimized build. Now you can of course choose to place this on a creature that fights or on your mount and then you have it available at all times. So again pick your poison but in both of these situations it's a very good option to have and unlike the previous two abilities this one can be acquired from a skill fruit there are many skill trees skill fruit trees in the game that you can go ahead and farm and eventually you should be able to find at least one of them to transfer to whichever creature you want i suggest starting with a mount but going with lilene or maybe even verdash can be a very good option the only other ability that I did not cover is the Poison Mist and this is the only ability in the game that has zero damage. However, do not be fooled, this is absolutely amazing if you want to take down bosses even 10-15 levels higher than your current best spells. So this is something that you can use to essentially poison a target and that target will always get damaged on a percentage base rather than a specific number. So even if it has like a million HP, it doesn't matter. The damage scales up percentage wise, so you can bring it down much easier. And on top of that, since poison is a status effect, it also increases drastically your catch rate. So in this case, it went from like 56 to 80% catch rate on this memo rest. Anyway, these are just some of these abilities. Let me know down below if you want to see more videos like these. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.